The club championship, the Catalina Wine Mixer, the Bassmaster Classic is what we worked for all year. Yes! Oh, God, what a stud. Yes! Do you talking? Huh? Or do you talking? Yeah. Well, we are here day one of the 2024. My sixth year on the Elite Series. We're here to start the season off on Toledo Bend. Uh, a massive lake that uh, has a lot of history on it. It's got a bunch of big fish in it. It's got a bunch of fish. So uh, a little cold right now, obviously, like 30 degrees this morning, but here in about three days, it's going to be 80. Uh, got a full moon Friday, 80 degree days, it's a recipe for disaster. So we're hoping, crossing our fingers, that that happens, that the big push happens. So today, we're not really expecting to do a whole lot today. Um, but we're gonna look around, graph around, try to look and see where some fish are and where they're gonna be. But uh, looking forward to this one. I think it's gonna be a good tournament. Let's see how it goes. Coward anymore? Two big ones? Yeah. Where are the nests at? I did catch me one nice one on a swimming jig. Yeah. More better one. Uh, I'm just below the bridge right now, like just below it. I got you. Um, seems like. Patrick's up here, so he can have the two bites. Yeah, I gotta go find me some dang grass. You know where uh, you go up the bridge, where all the and yellow edges are going? On the right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that whole big flat. Yeah, I'm back in here in this flat around these islands and stuff. I mean, it's pretty pockets from spawn. There's grass out here in front of them. They gotta be out here somewhere. Yeah. What about that big creek um, just above to the left? It looks like there could be a bunch of grass out from in front of it. I think it started up there. It, look, it looks like that. It looks like that whole north side of that pocket would have grass. All right, I'll check your wheeler. Ten four. Like that. <laughs> I can I can do that all week. 
So we uh, are wrapping up day one of practice. Um, you know, just went and, and kind of looked to see if there was still some fish out and if there was some fish up shallow. And, uh, you know, got a lot more bites than I thought we were gonna get, honestly. Uh, ended up catching probably a dozen or so. And uh, no, no big ones, but some nice ones. So it was very uh, surprising, honestly. There's still a bunch of fish up shallow, like really shallow. And I think it's only gonna get better. Um, but we really only found like one area, you know, that kind of had them, but got bit, you know, all the way up the lake. So we're gonna go down the lake uh, probably the next two days and uh, look around down there. And I'm hoping that it'll get warm enough by our last day of practice to be able to find some on bed. If not, we're gonna have to do it just during the tournament. But um, uh, at least we'll have an idea of what to do or where to go. All right, day two of practice to kick off the 2024 season. It kind of snuck up on us a little bit, but uh, it's here. Um, and this is kind of what you deal with on these early season tournaments. <laughs> if you look at the boat, it's pretty uh, pretty iced over. This is uh, not what you want spring of the year. It's gonna set them back a little bit, um, but this week is a little bit unique. We have uh, an off day and uh, for, for meetings, registration, and things like that. So um, really these first two days of practice, you're not fishing where they're gonna be in the tournament. You're, you're trying to find them stage stuff. You're trying to, you know, look for places that will pay off, you know, down the road. And that's really hard to practice for because um, these fish are moving so much. It was an event. Uh, a major event last week, Major League Fishing had an event, and uh, or two weeks ago, and it was dominated with forward facing sonar, um, shaking a minnow over them anywhere from 50 to 20 foot, and uh, those are suspended fish, and all those fish are starting to move up, or they did, they have water temperature that got in the 60s, and now we have this. Um, this morning, the water temperature's around 49 to 50, um, but again, we got two or three days close to 80, so it's going to warm up. It's going to change things, and that's the that's the key that we've got to you know keep in our head this week is is realize that things are going to change by the day. Um, even the first day of the event is going to be substantially different than the fourth day of the event. So we got to kind of keep our head on the swivel and uh, keep our eyes peeled and and kind of try to get them dialed in. I'm idling out of this particular creek right now and I'm starting to see bait. And this is the type of stuff that those guys were, you know, keying in on. Those fish were coming in off the main lake in these places to spawn. They were uh, colliding with these, these big balls of shad and then that's what they were doing. So we're gonna stop a little bit this morning. I'm not too excited about getting out there and running when it's 28 degrees. So we're gonna fish around in this, this bay and uh, see what we can figure out. We got one, wasn't like a man, but <laughs> we caught one. Little fat, healthy priest monitor. The, the problem with it all is, is you won't necessarily get anything dialed. Like they're gonna move up while we're off the water, I feel like. Um, just because, you know, you're going to have the right conditions and it's going to be a matter of just finding an area getting some bites and then having the confidence just to go back in there during the tournament and uh and relocate them and find them and when i say relocate them probably find them on the bed i'm hoping 
So that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to go down, but it's just going to be, it's going to be hard to get it dialed in with the way this week sets up and the way the weather's lined up and, and the off day that we got. I'm starting right here in this first little pocket. I had some dots in. I'll work my way towards you. Uh, so just pulled in this creek. It's called Housing. It's a well-known area. And Cook's right around the corner. I was trying to see where he was at so he didn't cover the same water. And uh, he said he's seeing some fish swim up on the sand, which is a good sign. Um, I fished shallow all up to today, or to where we're at today and haven't seen that. So maybe we're just getting into an area that's got them uh, coming up. And uh, that's what you're looking for. That's what we want anyway. So these next two warm days are gonna be getting up there making some shiny spots. All right, so we have an off day um, today. We're gonna we gotta go to get our headshots, pictures of our boats, trucks. Uh, go to our meeting. We've got to do some stuff at the service yard. Um, just all kinds of stuff we have to do today. Um, we're gonna go grab a bite to eat, some breakfast, and then go rig tackle and do all that there. So that way, when we get done with our meeting, we're we're done and we're ready to go. But uh, yeah, first. First off day of the year, so when they got to get all the stuff together for live, so. Okay, go do it. Can't keep it down, time's running out, here we go. Come with me now, stand up and shout, let them all know. Let them all know. We're gonna let them all know. 
All right, putting some fresh line on. Um, it looks like everything that we needed to happen really happened as far as it, the warmer temperatures and everything. The only thing in my mind, well, there's two things, um, but the biggest thing is this wind. Um, that's going to be, you know, an uncontrollable variable that we just kind of got to make the best of. Um, when you have a warming trend like this, one thing it does do, high winds stir up that cooler water and it slows down, you know, any positive warmth up that we had um, up shallow, it's gonna mix that cooler water with it. So it's gonna slow that down a little bit, but it was like 80 degrees today. So it really got hot. Um, so not necessarily worried from that aspect, just about getting around and being able to fish effectively tomorrow. We're supposed to have like, you know, 15 to 20 mile an hour winds, gust to 30. Um, and that's gonna really make things difficult. So uh, we're probably gonna have to hunker down in an area and uh, just see what we can, you know, grind out. But if we go tomorrow, um, that and the water falling a little bit. But one thing, one tool that we have with this deep dive app is I can look on here, I can pull it up. And the cool thing about it is it really condenses all the data that you need to know about a lake before you get there or while you're here fishing it. And I can look and just see what the water's doing. You don't have to have a bunch of apps like the water level over the course of a week or a day. And as you can see right here, in the past 24 hour period, it's fell about a 10th of a foot. That may not seem like a bunch, but when those fish are moving up and they're wanting to spawn, they want stability, they want stable water. Um, and the fact that it's fell that much could you know be detrimental to what we're wanting to do but i think they're pulling as much as they can right now out of this lake and it's a huge body of water so being that it's fallen a tenth of a foot over the course of a day it can't fall too much so it's not like when we're on lay lake and we find them on bed and it drops a foot overnight you're not going to have that here um, and, and that's evident in this app so you know, I'm back in the boat. I'm gonna rig up some swim baits, some swim jigs, some things like that, some heavy line, because big ones live here. We're going after them tomorrow. Are you ready? Yeah. Give me an interview. <laughs> Say it's a little windy out here, but I think we're going to go. It's going to it's gonna make this Toledo Bend show its teeth this morning on the run down there. But uh, once we get there, if we can settle down in an area and get a few bites and get some momentum going, I think we'll be all right. We're going to go. It's going to be a little interesting. We're going to start out deep uh, for a little while. If we can get you know a couple bites out there, then go up shallow, uh, find some protected stuff, see if we can't snatch some off the off the bed. Today is going to be a day where uh, we need to really just survive. We need to still be a part of it going into tomorrow when the winds lay down and then we'll be good to go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go get after it and uh, hopefully find five of the right ones and, and be where we need to be at the end of the day. It's gravitation and when I see ya It's like a bone to a golden retriever Adds up to an easy equation Me plus you no good
Better than what we was catching. Yeah. Not bad. Fajita's got like 30. Just floating out in my third game. Really? Just floating out. I caught, I caught two like that, two off bed, one on swim jig. One on swim jig. You don't know what you're doing tomorrow then. One on swim jig's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> around the green chip? Yeah. Topped off or underwater? Top off. Spinny bowl. What you got, 22? 20. 22 20 or 3? 20 and change. 20 and change. I had 20, <laughs> 20 and a quarter and I made like a three quarter of a pound cold. Right Out there? Like right there. City of Florida. Good to see you. All right, brother. Five fish here today for Drew Betty. 21 pounds, two ounces. He moves into ninth place currently. Uh. Do you have a big one that you need to play? I got like a seven and a half. Nah, this ain't an eight eight. Look at this spotted one right here. Number two on 
All the colors on that one. Yeah. Two ounces, so got to be pretty happy with the way day one went for you. Yeah, as windy as it was, and it kind of blew some of the places I wanted to fish out today, so uh, I'll take it for sure. Um, things are changing by the minute and by the by the uh, day here with all this warm weather, hopefully uh, they're swimming to the bank because that's what I really like to do. I had to spend a lot of time out there looking at that graph today to catch a few of them. Then when I went to the bank, I caught that big one. So hopefully I get to settle in more shallow tomorrow and spend the day doing that. Looking forward to seeing how it works out Thank for you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Been really cool. <laughs> right. Way cool. <laughs> Why were they not everywhere? I don't know. I, I, just, I, just, I didn't even see any. I, I, I never saw one that I didn't know was there already. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, no, nothing, on? yeah, nothing, nothing new pulled up. Yeah. Dude, I lost a legit. 10 or 12 pounder today on a Domeki rig. Like the last 10 minutes fishing over there. Dude, it was like I had it right up beside the boat. And I, like he was dead to rights. Like I had him. Backed off my drag and he like got up underneath the boat and he just like wallered one time and come off. I was like. What up? Five fish for Drew Cook here today. 17 pounds, 11 ounces, puts them in 29th place currently. Yeah, that was, 17, 11. they were hard to catch, huh? You probably need to show them off a little bit. Yeah. 17, 11, so a decent day today. Just gotta be happy with that. <laughs> what could have been is, is crazy, um, but you know, I caught that pretty early this morning, and uh, I thought with the weather and everything that they were just going to make a bum rush to the bank. So at about 9 or 10, I went up to the bank and stayed up there until about an hour left and uh, went back out and ended up getting some more bites and lost one great big one, probably the biggest fish I've ever had on in a tournament. But uh, I know what to do tomorrow. Hopefully the water will come back up a little bit and they will flood the bank because that's where I want to be. And there's pollen falling, it's 80 degrees. I mean, that's where they're supposed to be. So hopefully they're gonna be there tomorrow. Wish you luck, see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. He's a bass master class. That's, that's, so that's, that's Blake, me. that's Blake. That's Blake for you. Say no more. That's Blake. <sighs> you whack on him today? <laughs> no, caught 17 something. I caught it really quick and then I went to the bank Look for some on bed and some ain't there. <laughs> Dude, I literally caught a male right there on that point, flipping. Hmm. Fat one. Yeah. It was like that long, but just fat. <clears throat> and I went up in there and uh, I didn't see much, but on the way out, I looked up there and in the sun, like it's kind of shallow, there was one sitting up there. And I pulled down and I, I was going to give myself 30 minutes to get back because I thought it was going to be rough. And I pitched at it and I got it to bite and I'm looking at it and I'm like, He's probably not going to help much. And I shook it off, and I said, I'll just catch it tomorrow. Well, then, like, it turned and faced me, and it's, like, this wide. Mm. I'm like, okay. So then I had to fish for it for a little bit yeah. to get the bite again, and there's a four-pounder. All right. All right. Wrapping up day number one. Um, had 17-11, and we are in, like, 40-something place. And they caught them and the wind blew. So tomorrow the wind's not gonna blow and they're gonna catch them even better more than likely. So we're gonna kinda do the same thing we did today um, because I still think with the wind switching, um, you know, I 
looked on the deep dive app and the the lake didn't drop any it was just the wind that was blowing from the south that sucked a little bit of the water from the south end down uh, so when the wind switches around and starts blowing out of the north and hopefully it'll backfill all this up and then they'll get up there on the bank where where i'd like for them to be but um so that's the plan we're gonna go do the Demiki deal for a while and and uh probably go to a different area um tomorrow just because I, I didn't fish it today because the wind was wrong on it so uh could fish a couple sandbars and stuff like that and look for some old great biggins on bed All right, here we are, day two. Uh, it looks like we got clear skies. We got a north wind instead of a south wind today. A uh, lot light, lighter, a whole lot lighter, which is what we need. Um, we're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday. We're gonna start out um, in some drains and stuff, throwing a uh, little minnow bait on live scope and see if we can get a, our day started. And then as it warms up, we're gonna slink up there shallow and see if we can find us a couple on the bed or you know maybe get a bonus fish on that swim jig or that swim bait like we did yesterday so that's the plan uh, it worked out yesterday hopefully today it works out a little bit better all right day two here Toledo Bend um, you know the wind blew out of the southwest yesterday today it's gonna blow out of the northwest I think not as bad but um, I've been looking right here at the deep dive app for the wind Yesterday I was able to find a really area that was out of the wind so I could uh, live scope pretty good. So I'm looking here what I'm going to be able to fish today. It's going to pretty much be the exact opposite of what I fished yesterday. So yesterday I was fishing in here because the wind was blowing this way. Um, now it's going to be blowing this way. So I'm probably going to have to fish more like up in here and maybe around in here. But I'll also be able to get up on the bank and you know, look for some fish on bed. Um, on, on these banks that are not not windy, so that's the plan.
Division Elite Series champion, a former Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year from Georgia, Drew Cook. Went to work today in the AFCO wrapped Skeeter Yamaha at 17.11 yesterday. Bob just adds that here today. 13 pounds, 15 ounces, gives you 31 pounds, 10 ounces. He moves into 26th place and uh, may get a very rare weekend off. That's not something you normally do. Yeah, this one's going to sting too because tomorrow's going to be really nice. Um, you know, I found some big ones up shallow today that uh, just they just got up there. So, like, if I could have had a little bit more time or another day, it, it's crazy what could happen uh, out there or up there. But, uh, Started out out deep and, and got one big one and a limit fairly early and then I just hit the bank and, and went and I knew I was like one bite away. I mean, not even really a big bite, just eight bites. So I went back out deep and um, it just never happened. I uh, had some execution issues uh, this week that we got to get that, get knock the rust off. Um, hopefully we're lucky as I'll get out. My, my new son is on a formula that's $60 a can, so we need to make every cut all year. So uh, that's what we're shooting for. Maybe we just squeak in there by the skin of our teeth. Find out how it all shakes out. Look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. If not, we'll see you later. Look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Let's bring in a two-time Elite Series champion, a seven-time classic qualifier from Panama City, Florida, Drew Nick. At 21 pounds, two ounces yesterday. Lockfish had that here today. 13 pounds, seven ounces. With 34 pounds and nine ounces, you move into 24th place. I think it's enough to go tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, I hope so. I want another crack at them. I uh, would have bet the house that they were going to come spawn this week, um, but I guess all this wind mixed some cool water, and it just kind of cooled down in a couple of the areas that I was looking at, and um, that's all that was there today. So hopefully uh, this sunshine, it warms up a little bit. I, I'm not much of a scoper. I did it for till about 10 o'clock today, and I had about 20 followers, and I said, to the bank I go. So hopefully tomorrow works out a little bit better and a couple Big one slide up there and we'll make it interesting. You'll get it. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I need time. All right, guys, wrapping up here at Toledo Bend. Um, finished in like 56 plays. Just missed a cut. Uh, just never got one more bite. Um, one, of the, one of those ones I needed, a three or four pounder. But um, I caught most of my fish uh, that I weighed in on. Uh, Using live scope, you know, out there, Demiki rigging. I was using um, a couple different baits, but a three eighths ounce guppy head from Dirty Jigs with a four inch Z Man little minnow and a, a quarter ounce guppy head with a, a little Z Man thing and also a, like a Kitek uh, Shad Impact. And for the ones that I caught up shallow off the bed, um, I caught those on a Nori's front flapper uh, in green pumpkin, you know, quarter ounce weight, 20 pounds on line, same deal as normal. Um, you know, my, my line for the for the Demiki rig, I was using 10, 12 pound braid um, to a 10 pound leader, um, Sunline uh, FC leader. But that was that was kind of it, you know, just out there dobbing around, you know, looking on live scope. Um, caught some nice ones doing that, but you know, lost one great big one the first day. Uh, just never was around like a big wad of them and didn't really know enough. I thought they were going to swim up to the bank, didn't know enough to just just go look. Like I had one little area that had some fish in it and I just stayed in that area and milled around. But um, all of these baits that I caught them here this week, you can find at baitworks.com. Yeah, Chris. Hey, what size is that? Give it to you.
All right, here we are, day three, Toledo Bend. Uh, the goal is to make these cuts, and we made the first one. So uh, that's all great and all, but we got to make some adjustments today and see if we can do something to move up a little bit. Um, yesterday, the, the deep bite didn't work out, went shallow, and it didn't really you know, work out. So um, we're going to keep both of them honest today. Um, hopefully, it'll warm up a little bit, and the water temperatures will come up a little bit and uh, we'll get some new visitors up shallow and uh, maybe we can land on a couple of those. So uh, left a couple nice ones uh, yesterday afternoon. Hopefully they'll still be there and on bite, get our day started and uh, we'll go from there. I think uh, anything better than 16 or 17 pounds is gonna move us up um, and that's kind of our goal. We're a little bit too far out to uh, make the top 10 unless we catch you know, something exceptional which is capable out here. Um, but another thing, we got a big high school tournament going on. So there's gonna be like 600 boats on the lake and uh, that's gonna make things kind of interesting. It's gonna make things interesting for the leaders too. So you factor all that in and uh, there's a good shot for us to move up. We're gonna try to make that happen. Two-time Bassmaster winner from Panama City, Florida, Drew Benton. 34 pounds and 9 ounces to start the day today. Five fish to add to that. Semi-final Saturday took a lead series win last year. His second in his career, 12 pounds, 6 ounces, gives you 46-15. Moving to 30th place, but a, a good start. And you know this, this event was not an easy one. It went wrong for a lot of people that we would have predicted it would go right. Yeah, it actually went a little bit wrong for me today and yesterday. I kind of forced the uh, sight fishing deal and I wish I would have stayed out a little bit more until later in the day. I think that I wasted a lot of time doing that, but that's just what I love to do. This is a phenomenal lake to do it on. The water's clear and whenever they get up there and doing their thing, this is the funnest way to catch them for me. So this crowd's awesome. I have to thank Gamagatsu who sponsors this event you know i switched to gamagatsu this year because i almost cut my thumb off with cook's pocket knife and i didn't realize gamagatsu made pocket knives but i said if they make a pocket knife that sharp i gotta try their hooks so big shout out to them and uh, we'll roll on the fork and see if we can have another good one congrats on a great start to the season we'll see you down the road he's a former college all right wrapping up toledo bend uh I stayed on the bank near about all day today. Uh, hindsight being 2020, I should have stayed out a little bit more. 
Um, the cold night that we had, it took a little bit of time to get things going and, and for the water to warm up, but once it did, there was little males everywhere up shallow. I just never found a female. Um, I, I pecked around and uh, dodged all the local traffic and, uh, and caught me 12 pounds, which is not gonna cut it here. Um, but if we could have stumbled on a couple of those big old females, we'd have been right there in the mix. Uh, the guys out struggled today, which I knew was coming. Um, I think tomorrow, I think we just missed it, maybe by a day. I think tomorrow is, uh, is going to be the day that they all get up there. But, you know, moving on to Fork, um, I expect a lot of the same. I expect uh, there'll be a lot of fish shallow, a lot of fish spawning. We're going to, looking at the weather forecast, we're going to have a couple cold days. So it might knock them in the head a little bit, hopefully not, but uh, excited to get there and, and see what it's all about. Um, the bait works recap of the week, um, you know, live scoping out deep in the mornings. I was throwing, uh, you know, a little minnow bait on a, a, a Gamagatsu quarter ounce ball head jig with a, a two alt hook in it. Uh, I was throwing it on 10 pound Seaguar Tatsu uh, four carbon as my leader um, to 15 pound Smackdown braid as my main line. And then when I would go up shallow, I was swimming a no jack, uh, dirty jig, swim jig, swimming around reeds, um, any kind of vegetation around while I was looking, uh, 65 pound smack down braid on that. And uh, when I sight fished, I, uh, I used a new uh, Norris bait. Actually, I might have one right here. It's called the front flapper. Um, it's a really good creature bait uh, for sight fishing. It falls really good. It holds a hook, a good flipping hook really well. And uh, that got, got it done for me this week.